In the previous episode, it was revealed that Isa Rashid and his family were killed, and the whereabouts of the scrolls he had translated remained unknown. After Billy Meyer received those 25% of the scrolls, he translated them into German and published them. There has never been an English version until recently, in the past 10 years, when an English edition began to appear. If you buy this book on Amazon, you will notice something strange. Firstly, every sentence in the book has a word with a number, like in the Bible. Each sentence and each line has a corresponding number. Secondly, this book is a German-English bilingual edition. The German text is on the left side, and the English translation is on the right side. The reason for this arrangement is because of Billy. He doesn't want anyone to misunderstand his intentions. Billy knows German, but his English is not very good. He was afraid that during the translation process, if someone other than him translated it, there might be misunderstandings. So, he is very careful and insists on having the German text on one side and the English translation on the other side. This ensures that the meaning of the translation remains unchanged. So, this whole event, even the German edition has been published for a long time probably since the 1970s. After the publication, there was a professor in the United States named James Deerdorf. He was a professor at a university, and he heard about this matter. James Deerdorf is of German descent and knows German. He has a great interest in this kind of thing, so he delved into the research. He went deep into studying the Talmud Emmanuel and compared it to the Gospel of Matthew in the Bible, comparing them sentence by sentence in great detail. His work was very meticulous, and he discovered that the Talmud Emmanuel and the Bible have many similarities. But he found that there are some sentences in the Talmud Emmanuel that are longer compared to the Bible, where they are shortened. If anyone who has read the Bible or studied it will tell you that there are contradictions in the text. The statements in the Bible often contradict each other, with inconsistencies between the beginning and the end. Many scholars who study the Bible are skeptical about why such phenomena occur. Of course, these scholars try their best to interpret and reconcile the inconsistencies, but ultimately, there are still discrepancies. However, Deerdorf, in his comparison, found that the Talmud Emanuel, the so-called original text, is very coherent. There are no contradictions from beginning to end. Deerdorf speculates that if the versions of the Bible were derived from the Talmud Emanuel, the author of the Bible might have seen some discrepancies in the Talmud Emanuel and wanted to make changes accordingly. When you try to modify someone else's writing, the easiest way is to cut out the parts that don't fit and add a few words to make the grammar smooth and consistent. This approach is the simplest because as an author, you don't need to think deeply to add something. You need to have a clear understanding of what you want to add. If you don't understand it, you won't be able to add it properly. If you only notice that a passage doesn't fit, you can simply delete it. If a sentence is not consistent and there are parts that don't fit, you can easily delete it. However, if you want to add something, it becomes much more difficult. In terms of logic, it's correct. 
It is quite evident that there is a possibility that the person who wrote the Bible took the original version of Jesus, specifically the Talmud Emmanuel version. However, upon reviewing it, they found certain elements that didn't align and therefore removed them. What were these elements that didn't align? For example, Jesus spoke about the concept of reincarnation, the cycle of rebirth, which he acknowledged as a true and existing phenomenon. However, you have to understand that at that time, Judaism did not recognize the existence of such a concept and believed in no reincarnation. So, the disciples, as I mentioned earlier, all followed Judaism, and they considered this concept to be inconsistent. Therefore, they removed all references to reincarnation when writing the Bible. This is why it led to many contradictions and inconsistencies throughout the Bible. However, in the Talmud Emmanuel, everything flows smoothly without contradictions. In addition, many other disciples, the authors of the Bible, also believed in altering or deleting anything that didn't align with their beliefs. This resulted in a Bible filled with disjointed sentences. But in the Talmud Emmanuel, everything is coherent. Regarding James Deerdorf, if you're interested, you can consider purchasing his book titled, Celestial Teachings, The Emergence of the True Testament of Emmanuel, Jesus, on Amazon. It is worth studying. After conducting his research, James Deerdorf personally concluded that the Talmud Emmanuel exhibits a high degree of authenticity. Furthermore, he posits a strong probability that the versions of the Bible have been edited and modified based on the Talmud Emmanuel. If you search for Jesus in India, you will find a lot of information. This information is about where Jesus was said to have appeared, including many years ago, which I don't remember exactly how many years ago, maybe even up to nearly 100 years ago. In the Soviet Union, an explorer went to the Himalayas and had an accident there. The local monks, most likely from Tibet, saved him and took him to their temples for recuperation. He became friends with the monks and found out that they possessed many ancient scriptures and records, including records of Jesus' personal deeds. They showed these records to the Soviet explorer. Time has come for now. We will continue discussing Talmud Emmanuel in the next episode. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching.